Okay, so now that we know how to use the cards and study, let's talk about the games. So I'm going to hop over here to this set of states and capitals right here. And I'm going to tell you about a couple of these games. The first one is match. So I'm going to click match. And so what you want to do when you play match is, we'll go ahead and start the game, you're dragging one the term onto another. So Missouri, Jeff City, it goes away. And it's uh, it's timing you while you do this. And you can actually make it competitive. Boom. And that's match. It gives you a little printout and uh, a little readout of your how you did. And it gives you comparison of the people that have done this quiz and their score on it. So that's match for you. Um, I don't want to do that again. I'm actually going to go back. And we're going to talk about the next type of game, which is gravity. And gravity, um, it's more of a, you have to know uh, the term and you need to be able to type it. So um, it gives you the term here. Uh, you might want to do definition if you have long definitions coming down. But anyway, um, these asteroids are going to start coming down and you need to type the answer to keep them from crushing your planet or whatever. So, th the game will start slowly at first. Ooh, man, I didn't spell that right the first time. It'll start slowly at first, but as you go further and further, they will start to come down faster and faster. And you basically want to prevent the asteroids or the comets or whatever from crushing your planet. And you go faster and faster and faster until, you know, either you get all the answers right or the game ends. Now, what is kind of cool about this game is that uh, the ones that you miss, once they hit, I'm going to let this one hit so you see how what it does. Um, once it hits, it will prompt you to type up the correct answer. So it says, oh, it was Richmond. So it wants you to actually type that. And so then, okay, so I know this one, Santa Fe. Must have missed that one the first time again. So, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end, after a round or whatever, if you miss one, you'll eventually see it come at you again. So the ones that you miss will repeat, so you can uh, practice the one. And so the design is that it kind of filters down the ones that you're struggling with, that you know the answers for, you will... Uh, be seeing more often. So that's actually pretty fun and it's a good time with your students. Alright, so I just leveled up. We're going to go to the next level and you'll see they'll go slightly faster, although I'm not going to play this long enough to find out how it ends. The last one is called Quizlet Live. I will not be able to really show you how this one works. Um, but what we can do is watch this little video of this little man here. Hi, I'm Thompson. I work here at Quizlet. Today we're going to show you our new in-class activity, Quizlet Live. Quizlet Live allows you to use your study sets in the classroom to help your students learn soft skills like teamwork and communication and hard vocabulary skills. I'm here in Quizlet's office with our team. We love to test our products before we ship it out to all of you. Today, the team are my students. Say hi, team. Hi, hi Mr. Ng. We're going to show you what Quizlet Live will look like in your classroom. Every student will need a computer or a mobile device. First, we'll select Live Study Mode, and then click Create Game. So my teacher computer is telling the students to type Quizlet.Live into their web browser. Quizlet Live works with a mix of devices, so any student should be able to join in no time just by entering the six-digit code above. As students join, you can see the student count and the names of students who have joined. It's important to encourage your students to type in their real names. That way, they can easily find their team at the next step. If one of your students types in a nonsensical name, you can easily click to scratch it out and then have your student re-enter their name. Quizlet Live creates random teams of three to four students. This helps students who normally don't talk to each other learn to work and communicate together. Now our students will move around to get into their teams. 
Teams will need to communicate to pick the right term and work closely together to get each question right. We find that Quizlet Live works really well for introducing new material and final reviews before assessments. My teacher computer is now projecting the leaderboard. The first team to 12 wins. However, one wrong answer will send you back to the start. Oh, sorry snakes. Congratulations, penguins. As soon as the game is over, we can review how the whole class did. We can see what terms they learned by playing the game, terms they regularly missed, and terms they know by heart. I can also use this time to review frequently missed pairs and help reinforce these concepts. We've been testing this game in schools across the country. We're always looking for ways to improve it, and we want to hear about problems you encounter. Thanks. So, it's kind of like if you've done a Kahoot or something like that before. It's just a live way that you can do a quiz in your classroom, and so it's just a, it's adds a little more fun and engagement to your typical quiz uh, environment. All right, so those are the different ways that you can play games with Quizlet. Um, a lot of cool stuff, very fun, and your kids will probably enjoy that more than just boring old flashcards.